Hi friend, welcome to Exodus chapter 15. We are wrapping up this beautiful song that the people of Israel sing to the Lord after he rescues them from the hand of the Egyptians. After he really does the miraculous and divides the Red Sea such that they can walk across on dry ground. <laughs> Let us not miss the miraculous here. And really this song in a beautiful way points to God's wonders, his miracles, his glorious deeds and works in a way that inspires awe, uh, inspires praise, inspires exaltation. And I hope that you have, as, as you've pondered these verses, have just enjoyed the goodness of God to his people. And the, I don't even know, like, what words to use, the almightiness of God and just how he is awesome and uh, inspiring. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Majestic. This word majestic inspires all or reverence to the beholder. And don't we see that in this song? It's beautiful, beautiful. So, you know, you know my favorite question to begin with when digging into scripture is the who. <laughs> and this song today, this passage begins with who. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders, doing miracles? Uh, you stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples have heard, they tremble, pangs have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now the chiefs of Edom, dismayed, trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still a stone. Till your people, O Lord, pass by. Till the people pass by whom you have purchased. Here's that redemption. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. The place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. And then this goes on and ends with Miriam uh, leading the women out and singing, sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider, he is thrown into the sea. Sing to the Lord. Friends, there's an imperative there. You must sing to the Lord. Why? Because he has triumphed gloriously. And even as I speak that out loud, I'm just reminded how, yes, even uh, this holds true for us. There is a spiritual lesson here for us as well. The Lord, through Jesus Christ, has triumphed gloriously over our enemy of sin and death. And so we too are called to sing. You must sing to the Lord. Oh, friends, um, I, I, you know, basically all I could do today was make a list of the beautiful things that I learn about uh, who God is. And I, I don't even think my list is all comprehensive here from this passage of scripture, but I'll, I'll just, this will be a repeat since I've just read this song out loud, but here's some things that I noticed. And I just want to say from a personal perspective, as I just sat and pondered who the Lord is and picked out some of these things that I learn about him through this song, it just steadies my heart. Like, when it says, when the song, when the people sing that uh, God will bring them in, God will plant them on his own mountain, that's how I feel. I feel like the Lord just brought me to himself today, that he planted me, that he has studied my heart in him today. 
by just sitting and meditating and pondering and understanding who he is and what it is that he has done. So a few things. Number one, they sing that really there is none like him, right? Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Inherent in this is that no one is like him. How do we know that? We know that from all of the cross references, beautiful cross references to that verse. One is 1 Samuel 2, 2, there is none like the Lord, for there is none beside you. There is no rock like our God. Uh, there's none, there's none beside him. And it was just a reminder to me to seek him first. There's nothing, there is nothing on this earth like our God. So seek him first. Friends, that would be enough. I could turn off the camera right now and just ponder that one truth for the rest of the day, that there is none like God. And that would be enough. It truly is enough. And we could come back tomorrow and ponder the next beautiful thing that we learn about God. I'll go ahead and continue with my list. Number two, I see that he is majestic in holiness. This is what they sing to him. He is majestic in holiness. And I already mentioned that he inspires all in the beholder. And so he inspired all in the people of Israel. But what's, what's amazing is we see that he inspires all, not only to the people of Israel, but to all of Israel's enemies, right? Uh, they were listed. They are listed in this song. They are trembling. They are dismayed by the greatness, by the strength, by the power of the Lord to rescue his people. He has made himself known to the people of Israel, to the people of Egypt, and to the people and nations of the world. So love that. Number three, I see he, he, uh, they praise him for doing wonders. And as I pondered that, I'm like, yes, he is the miracle worker. Uh, I don't even think I put that. Yes, I did. Glorious wonders, wonders, something that causes feelings of wonder. And these are miraculous. Now, if we've studied, if we've been journeying all the way through Exodus, we have seen many signs and wonders. And this rescue of Israel at the Red Sea just tops them all, right? Uh, we see that nothing, uh, nothing will uh, nothing will harm God's people. He is leading. He is guiding. He is protecting them. He is vanquishing their enemy. He has vanquished their enemy. We see that in verse 12 of the song. You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. Um, and we see that it is God who leads his people in the next verse. And he does that with his steadfast love, meaning he is faithful. He will never leave nor forsake his love. And friends, that's not a kind of love that we know here on this earth, is it? A steadfast love, one that will never ever, ever leave or forsake. Friends, that is how God loves his people and loves you. Again, here's just one truth about God that we can tuck into the pocket of our heart and take with us into our day. Um, do you see how I just feel drawn into the Lord and planted with him today because of these beautiful truths about his character and what it is that he has done. Uh, I just want to sit here <laughs> for the rest of the day. We see that it is God who redeems. It is God who guides, 
by his strength. And where is he guiding? He is guiding to his holy abode. In this case, to his mountain. He's already told Moses, that was back early on in Exodus, that he would take him back to this mountain, his mountain, where Moses and the people would serve him. But here is God's presence. He leads us. He leads his people to his presence, to, to where he is. Uh, verse 16, he speak, they speak again to how God has purchased them. Here's that redemption. He has redeemed them. Um, at, uh, at number nine, I see he will bring them in. He will plant them on his holy mountain. Like he's going to plant them. He is going to root and ground them with himself. And we can take just such great assurance in that. And then last of all that I, I noted today is verse 18. He will reign forever and ever. And when I look that word reign up in my Bible dictionary, I see that he will reign as king or supreme ruler over a nation. He is the king of this people of Israel. Um, it's, it's just, it's beautiful, friends. Just beautiful. Uh, application, I don't think, I, I don't, I, I mean, the key application for me came from the imperative command in the last verse. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Sing to the Lord. And I, I, along with that, for me, I'm not a singer. I don't have a great voice. I will go play a song on my piano and, and worship the Lord in that way. But there's something about just sitting here in his word, pondering and meditating and celebrating who he is, his character, his steadfast love, and the things that he has done, how he has vanquished the enemy, how he draws us to himself that we might serve him. Oh, friends, uh, just sitting here pondering and celebrating all that he has done and tucking that into the pocket of our hearts. We can take that with us into our day and all day long ponder who he is and celebrate what it is that he has done and what it is that he will do. Mm -hmm.